Hello YouTube, getting ready to start making the video. I'm going to do a mixture of this one and the one with the brick. Uh, I'm going to do the one with the brick to kind of show how I do the brick. Because um, it's kind of a little more involved, so I kind of want to show that. But I do kind of like the having the overhang on this one. Now I'm not going to do the extent of, you know, all this right here. Sorry, my prop thing is actually still on so i'm not going to go to the extent of having this much overhang on it uh but but i do want a little more overhang than what is essentially on this one so i'm gonna do kind of a mixture of this one and that one right there um i'm gonna get started okay before every build i usually kind of make myself a rough sketch. I mean, you don't have to be all fancy with it and all that kind of stuff, but this kind of gives me an idea of what direction I want to go as far as how tall I want it to be at the peak, which I'm going 60, which is going to be five feet, 40, uh, four feet after the roof pitches down. Uh, so I'll have a one foot pitch. Um, now after I, after I draw it out on my actual foam, you know, I might change this to maybe 52. So maybe I don't have such a drastic slope, but I kind of like the, dra I kind of like the larger slopes. They kind of I don't know, they kind of look a little more, you know, you know, they kind of give them like a more taller appearance. Because uh, you got to remember when you're building these things, especially if it's, you know, for like a little yard haunt or something like that, you know, your audience is going to be, you know, little kids, you know, for trick-or-treating and stuff. So a five-foot, you know, concrete-looking structure is going to look really tall to them anyway. So, you know, and more, the more pitch you put on it, the more illusion they kind of have to them. So I kind of like, I kind of like giving a little more pitch to them that way and then i'm going to do a six inch on each side that's the part that's going to be bumped out uh, and then the brick is going to be in this section right here and i'm going to give just a just a subtle crown to it you know and that's going to make it look like you know that's where the stucco is and you know the brick is going to be inside here i might put a base down here uh just to make it look like you know like there's actually like something on the bottom and then the brick was all laid on top of it now the uh, styrofoams there's a couple different kinds you can get. Uh, you can get this style right here that has a foil on both sides. You know, and then you have your styrofoam in the middle and then you have this kind right here. Uh, each one of them, you know, a lot of times this could be pink. Sometimes you'll find it in blue, depending on who you get it from. Um, I know, unless I find a distributor somewhere uh, here, on, you know, here in Florida, I have a hard time finding the thicker stuff, the stuff that's two inches, which is really nice to work with. Uh, but like, you know, the simple one inch, you know, you can pretty much pick up at any hardware store. Uh, each one of them have good qualities to them. The, those are actually the best to use um, for building mausoleums and stuff like that. Um, they hold up a little bit better, you know, outside, especially if you plan on using it for multiple seasons and stuff like that. Uh, the downside to them is since they are, you know, foam and there's nothing on them when you paint them. They t the paint tends to sometimes bleed into them, so it takes a little bit longer to paint them sometimes. But they do work really well, and you know they don't have anything on them as far as foils and all that stuff that can flake off or anything like that. So, like that's actually that stuff is really good to use, but it's also a little bit more expensive than you know that stuff right there. This stuff right here is good for uh, it, uh, it paints quickly because with the foil on here, it doesn't take much to paint. You know they paint really quickly. Uh, the paint will stick right to them with no problem. Uh, the downside to this this kind is, is if you peel that foil off and you leave it outside, uh, without the structure of the foil on both sides, it will tend to buckle, it'll bow. Especially like in the heat, like if it's in direct sunlight. So if you have it sitting out there in your front yard and you don't put some kind of like reinforcement on behind it, which when I go to do this, uh, since I'm gonna do the brick, I'm gonna be peeling it off where the brick's at. So I'm gonna be gluing a couple pieces of uh, one by twos to the backside as ribs, so I don't get that buckle. Um, as I've had it happen in the past, that's why I'm gonna show you.
tape, you know, a marker to just a straight edge. So what I want to do is I want to try to make that radius as symmetrical as possible. All right, I got the basic drawing laid out. Uh, you can see I got I did that border on the bottom like I was talking about. I got my six inch sides on the other side. I got my radius right here. And then uh, you can see where I got my roof is gonna be at four feet. Then it's gonna go to the five feet. Now, since I'm doing the brick on this one, the only thing I, the only thing I gotta cut out really is just the roof itself. After I cut that out, everything else is pretty much gonna stay put. Um, then I'm going to show how I do my brick. Um, I, I always do the brick before I do anything else because uh, it's going it's much easier that way and then after I do that then I'm going to flip it over and then that's where my 1x2 is going to come into play. I'm going to put 1x2s I'm going to glue them to the back side of this first before I do anything else. So this way because I'm going to run nails like roofing nails or screws with washers along the perimeters so this way it helps make sure that those don't fall off. And then those will be hidden behind all the rest of the trim that's going to go on there. So this way you don't see those fasteners. So once I get this all cut out, I'll get started on the brick and show you that part. Now all I use to cut my stuff out is just, I just pick up these cheap kitchen knives. You know, dollar store special stuff. You know, because you're going to dull them out anyways, depending on, depending on what you're working on. If you're working on a nice wood table, it might last a little longer. But I'm dragging these against my concrete floor, so I'm constantly having to resharpen them. So I just buy these nice little, you know, Dollar Tree specials, Dollar Dinner. Now to do my brick, all I use, I use just a, a router like this. And uh, I just took a regular drill bit and just you know cut it all flat and now you also got to keep in mind that that foam board is only three quarters of an inch thick you know that the stuff with the foil on there so you don't want this bit no more than maybe three eighths of an inch because you really don't, you don't want to cut all the way through because then you're going to weaken it uh you want to just give it just enough so we can make your lines and make the brick stand out and make it obvious so i'll show you how i do this now essentially what i do to make my brick is i just take a level i turn it up on end you know, and then I use that um, router. And then as I cut my line on here, then, you know, when I, when I move the level, I tend to move the level to where it sits on that line each time. So this way uh, I'm only creating so much gap in between, you know, for the thickness of this. And uh, that's what that's what I can, you know, make my brick. Now, if you want to do something that's more like a, a block, like a block size, then you can always lay it on its side or get a, a little bit bigger and I'll put your lines further apart, but this is gonna make it where you have nice straight lines and it'll look a little bit more convincing than if your lines are kind of waving like that. The next step of this process is your verticals. Uh, now, what I like to do is I try to I like to try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, since I did, since I always use 48 inches as my overall because it's a nice even number. Plus, also the sheets only come 48, so you can maximize you know how much you get out of a sheet. By taking off six inches on either side, it leaves me 36 in the center. So I just figure 36. I just round everything you know to a number that sounds you know like it might be a good size number and I, I found six six inches seems to like look the best so you can go four inches if you want but i, I do six 
because six inches really is only from this point to this point. So it's really not that big, you know, when you think about the span of this whole thing. Now what I do is on my very bottom row, I do every three because you gotta think, you know, your bricks are gonna be staggered. So say this is a brick, the next one's gonna be here and it's gonna stagger like this uh, for your brick look. So what I do is I do every, I do my bottom grid at three inches and then I come towards the top and I'll start whatever row I wanna start at my six. So then I do my six, 12, 18, 24, so on and so on. And then the next one where I gotta have my stagger, obviously I'm gonna do three. So I'm just gonna measure three over from here. And then what I'll do is just to make things easier, either I'll put the tape measure right here. So my next one will be six, 12 again. So you keep your measurements the same, or I'll move the tape measure over and put my six here and go six, 12 that way. So this way I can keep them consistent. thing is uh while you're blowing out the grooves if you if you hold the blow gun at just the right angle you can essentially uh, use it to help blow the paper off so you're going to start exposing your brick but the one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take like a razor blade and just go around your perimeter line just enough to cut through the foil you know so this way when the air blows it it's only pulling that up and it's not actually like pulling up the section that you don't want to pull up At this point, you can start to see that your, uh, your mausoleum is starting to take shape. You got the brick. And what's kind of cool about this kind right here with the foam on it, or the foil I mean, when you tear that foil off, you can see it, it automatically makes like a nice coarse look for your brick. So you don't have to sit there and really age that age the brick or anything like that uh and even in some areas where you know the the blow gun kind of blew a pot you know a little spot right there out so you can see like the kind with the foil on it and doing brick kind of works out really good because it gives you a nice look to begin with now there's a couple different ways people do brick i've seen people rip little strips you know thin little strips and they just glue them in place you know to be honest with you that's pretty much just about as much work is doing it this way the only other way that makes it easier is the fact that you just feed it through a table saw and just you know slice it this way you have to take your time and stay on your lines but it's about the same amount of work in both directions but this way you know you're still using that same one piece and you haven't wasted any more of your extra material yet i know this is where you're going to hit your first dead end in the road where you're going to have to wait is uh, unless you can find a glue or something that dries super quick. I always uh, anchor wood to the back side of my props, right on the edge, all the way around the whole prop. And what I do is I put a caulking behind it and then I'll flip it over after it's dry and then I'll run some either roof and nails or something with a washer on it uh, to help lock in place so this way those pieces uh, stay, stay intact on there. Uh, because at this point, um, if say, this prop is only going to be a prop that's going to be sort of maybe close to a wall and no one's going to see the back side of it. Now you can run stakes in the ground and screw the stakes into the, the wood right there and that'll help hold your prop up. Or if you're going to do like what I'm going to do where I'm going to make it two feet deep, now I can put L brackets in the corners and I can finish the rest of my framing and then cover it from that point. All right, Saturday night. I've already flipped it over. 
and just ran nails in them. There's just kind of just like roof and nails or drywall nails, however you want to put it, you know. Um, and the reason I put the caulking on the back side of it, even though I'm nailing it, is just to have a little bit more bond between the wood and the back of that foam. So this way, say we got a really bad windstorm or something like that, I don't have to worry about it trying to pull itself off the nails. It has a little bit more, you know, it's secured better, plus the nails help. Okay, I've kind of got started just to kind of show you kind of what, you know, the overall plan is going to be where that, that part steps out and you got the little ledge there. Now, what I do is, uh, let me see if I can position this for you if you guys see it just fine. I use uh, this kind of caulking right here. I pick it up from Home Depot. Yeah, it's made by Loctite. It's a PL300. It's for uh, foam board. It's a construction adhesive. That's what I've used on quite a few of my props and it, it bonds, it holds pretty good. I mean, if, you, if you're really, you know, got a really nasty storm or something like that, I mean, there's not a whole lot that's really gonna hold styrofoam together, but this works really well and I have, I've had pretty good luck with it. But what I do is uh, I just um, take my strips, And what I do is I get a like just like regular like nails. What I use the nails for is um, kind of like on the back piece. It just adds a little extra reinforcement. And what I do is uh, when I put the nail when I put the nails in, I put them at an angle like this. I shove them below the surface. And then what I do is I'll take caulk and I'll just smear a little caulking over that, and um, before I paint it, and it kind of hides them. By shoving them in at an angle, like that, that that gives it more of a, you know, less harder to pull straight off. Now, if I just ran it straight in, it would they they, they, they pull apart much easier. So, run them in from below the surface. want to do I put a fair amount on there I try not to get too much because uh, once, once you push down on this and you're pushing those nails in it's gonna smear inside there anyways as you can see Now, if you want, to, now if you're building like something that you uh, um, wanted to take a little more time with, you could always run this stuff to a table saw, 45 your angles, so when they come together, they have a nice little, uh, you know, nice corner, so you don't see the foam like this. But once you paint it and you put all your your dry lock or or the method that I'm going to use uh, over all this stuff, it all blends right in. You don't really see it anyways. Um, I mean, if someone's looking close enough, they could, you know, they would notice the difference. But I don't, I don't sweat too much over that because I look at it as these are kind of meant to be seen in the dark, anyways, up close. You know, because that's usually when trick or treaters are out, and that's usually when your yard display is usually really being used is at nighttime with all the lights and stuff on it. So no one's really going to be coming up to these things close enough to really look at that in the middle of the day. It's it's unlikely. And all I do. On this part now because I have put because I put the piece of wood on the bottom here I um was on the camera a little bit there I took a drill and I drilled four holes through there so I can shove the nails through now unfortunately my nails are in, not gonna be at an angle on this part uh, I just have to deal with the fact that you know the caulking is gonna have to do the bulk of the work but when I run the nails on this part they'll go at the angle and I got uh I gotta do this bottom side I line it up with the edge of where my brick was tied because you want to make it look like the brick kind of behind it. And then this way you just kind of got to do it by eye and push the nails through and hopefully you don't pop it out the side. Even if you do, you can pull it back out. Once you paint it, put your stuff on there, you're going to be able to hide it anyways. So it's not like a critical 
thing. Uh, you didn't destroy your prop just because the nail kind of popped out the side. Yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. It just means you have to do a little extra uh, caulking in that spot. That's all. I'm trying to push this over a little bit. Sometimes I'll push it through slow, and if I happen to see, like right there, I kind of saw where I, it was a little too close to the edge. Now I'll move it, I'll just move it over a little bit. All right, now I'm getting ready to start working on this section. Now, obviously, I don't want uh, that much recess inside there. You know, I want this to be a little, you know, I want probably the this section to be about the depth of this. So what I'm doing is I just took a piece, an extra piece, and I just laid it on here, you know, and I went on the bottom side and I traced, you know, the shape of the roof. But you want to make sure that that doesn't interfere with your roof pieces. So then what I do is I take just a piece of my extra foam board, I'll put it on my line, and I'll draw it on the back side. And what that'll do is that'll make it to where it's the exact size that when I go and put it in here and I put the roof piece on, everything will line right, uh, it'll fit right inside here like I want it to. All right, the next part that I'm doing is I'm getting ready to set that piece. Now what I did is I took a just a drywall square and I ripped myself a bunch of essentially spacer blocks because I want to make sure this piece stays consistent and I want to be able to have something I can press it down to. So when I put all my nails and all that stuff into it, I don't want it to be, you know, wavy like this. So you see I put it on here and then um, I put some dabs of caulking. Now I'll just take this piece and it'll just set right inside here. Obviously these can be adjusted. I can move these around wherever I need them. But that'll give me something to where I can push this down tight and then put my nails in. And then the roof piece will sit right in this area. So I'm gonna start working on that. Okay, so I got that piece on. You see by putting the stoppers on there, I was able to push this down. Uh, you see where the roof, I just, uh, when they come to the ends, I just kind of hold it here and just eyeball it with my knife. Even though it's a little off, I can shave that a little bit once the caulk is dry. You know, and the same thing over here, just run it to the edge, pinch it down, you know, nice and tight. I have a few nails going through here, so it goes through kind of all three layers. It's going through this one, this one, and into this one. Uh, so this way it's kind of bond bonding all these corners together. So this way it makes the corners, you know, extra strong. And then, um... What I'll end up doing after is, this is just a little excess, but I'm gonna, I'll, I end up caulking all my seams, which also helps increase the, the overall strength of the, uh, the, the prop, because you're, you know, gluing all the exterior seams together. The next is just these two pieces for right here, which is my base piece, which is gonna be a two part, and then the upper piece. And then at that point, uh, other than just you know, trying to decide what direction I want to go, if I want to do like a, like any kind of bevels or, or maybe like areas like maybe over here, maybe take some of the styrofoam off and, you know, give it like the look like maybe some of it broke off and you see the brick behind it and that kind of stuff. So um, once I get these last couple pieces on, then I just got to make that decision if I want to do any extra detail or if I'm going to be ready to get ready to start building uh, the back half of it and then get ready for paint. All right, I got everything glued together. Got my bottom piece on. You can see where I've gone over the nail heads. And like I said, it, this doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because by the time you paint your dry lock or whatever you're gonna do to kind of make it look like stone, you know, the little roughness isn't gonna affect anything. You know, you see I got it all caulked. Now a little trick for like these corners is I just take like a piece of wood cedar shim, just cut it to the shape. And I'll let it get, you know, right inside there and you can just tool it right out. You know, so this way you can get that caulking all the way into that corner. You know, little just a little trick right there. Now the next part is to decide what you're gonna do up there. I mean, you don't really want to just leave this. So you know, I you know how these little cheap ones are like from you know the Dollar Tree. They're, you know, they're they're good because they're cheap, and if you cut them up, you don't really care too much. Now I could do like where I could cut it here and just have the R.I.P. with this little scroll work sitting up here or I've already measured my my height and I could I could cut it just below the skull and crossbones and just you know curve this right here and I can put just this section 
right in here. But, you know, to kind of fit with the, kind of like the whole rest in peace kind of thing, I'm gonna go with this top section. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut it here. Put a little caulk on the back, center it, stick it right in. Okay, pretty much at this point now, uh, and if you weren't gonna say build it out, you know, two feet or three feet, four feet, however you, how big you want to make it, and this is just gonna be kind of like, like in the distance or something like that, where you're only gonna see the face here. You're pretty much at this point now where you can throw some stakes in the ground, screw them to the the blocks that we put in the back, get it all painted, put some lights on it, and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show, what I meant by uh, doing bevels is like right now it's all just like this one's just all just square corners uh, no detail really to them uh, on a lot of them what I'll do is I'll take my table saw and I'll feed my foam through it and make like a kind of like a little wedge like a little triangle piece and like like up here let's say you can stick that right here you know and that kind of gives you that kind of like that little you know detail to it and then you could always 45 this corner and run it back here and then straight across so you kind of give yourself like a nice little you know bead detail or a cove detail you know kind of deal across all the lower sections you could run it across the top section up here just to kind of give it that little extra detail that little extra to it to make it look a little bit more fancy um for the for the purpose of this video i'm not gonna go, i'm not gonna go through all that but i just wanted to show what i meant by when i say uh doing a, a bevel uh, you can even put the bevels here so it looks like it you know bevels back into the brick if you wanted to uh you can put it right here you know all kinds of stuff i mean you can do all, all kinds of things like that or you can rip little small squares like little like squares about the ha half the size of your three quarter and put those here so then you end up with a flat edge and then it'll go it'll, it'll recess back and another flat edge and recess back so it'll kind of give you like a stair step kind of effect to it you can go that route too so there's all kinds of little things you could do um, to kind of give it like a little more personality, a little more character to it. But for the, for the demonstration for this video, I'm not going to go through all that. I just want to describe, you know, that purpose. So, and, uh, thank you for watching.